Yeah, hello everybody. There's so many people. It's Friday, you should go out have a beer. Um, so this is me. Um, my name is Fabian. I work at Kollerebbe. Um, it's a, an independent agency based in Hamburg, which is the most beautiful city in Germany. Don't go to Berlin. Oh, if you go to Berlin, take the train. It's only one half hour to Hamburg. It's a better place to go. Uh, I'm CCO at this, um, at this agency. I'm going to tell you quite quickly about it. Um, it's quite an unusual agency. This is where we work. It's probably the most beautiful uh, location where you can work in, in Hamburg. It's called the Speicherstadt, which is an old warehouse area. This you see here on the right corner on one of these balconies. You can find me most of the time hanging around looking at the water. Um, it started in 25 years ago with eight people just in one corner there, and now it's a whole building with 300 people and also with this castle there, uh, there we are in. Um, we've been awarded Agency of the Year three times in Germany. Uh, we've been the most awarded digital agency in Germany last year. Uh, we've awarded 300 employees from 20 nations and in the Agency Football League we are ranked 16 out of 17. <laughs> These are some of the clients we work for. Um, we launch Netflix in Germany, we're doing stuff for Apple, we work for Amazon. Lufthansa is our biggest client, it's a fantastic client. Um, we are the global lead agency, which is quite unusual for an independent agency because normally you have these network things like, hey, we have offices in Singapore and everywhere, come to us, but they came to us. Um, we're doing some good stuff for Audi and um, Telefonica, which is a huge telco telco company. There are about 50 more clients, but I didn't want to put that on here because I want to make you believe that we only work for the coolest dudes on earth. <laughs> um, what makes the agency so special is that we are not just one of these regular ad agencies. I mean, our main business is to build brands, like we do brand strategies, brand campaigns and all that, but we're also quite strong in the startup scene, which means we invest into startups, we work with them, and not, um, the reason why we do it is not uh, because we, we hope that one of them is doing the big exit for $500 million, but it's um, because we learn so much from it. We work with these guys and we start building um, companies from scratch. This is just such an, such an interesting experience and it's, um, um, it helps us a lot in the, in the fight for the young talents. So all the guys who want to who leave university and want to go to Google or Facebook or wherever, they think about coming to us because we are um, doing things differently. Um, and the third column of our business based on is that we invent our own products. Um, for example, this one. Uh, this is a cosmetic series. It's called Stop the Water While Using Me. So the name of the brand is also the message. Um, it's quite funny because it was a one of our designers who came up with the idea eight or nine years ago, and he said, hey, I have a funny idea for a packaging, could win some lines in Cannes. And we looked at it and said, no, no, we have to do this for real, it's so good. And meanwhile, it's, um, it's distributed in over 30 countries and it became a really big, recognizable brand. Um, when Andrew asked me to, to, if I would like to give a speech, I said, okay, I can do it. And I asked him, what about? He said, whatever topic you like. Yeah, okay. And how long is it going to be? Well, about 40 minutes. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and how many, how many people are going to be there? I said about 800. Yeah, great, I do it. Yeah. Uh, so I thought, what should I talk about? Um, then I think maybe, maybe I just introduce my country to you a little bit. So this is our Chancellor, Angela Merkel, <laughs> when she's having fun. Um, these were the five best seconds in my life, probably. It was 2014, the World Cup final, the 113th minute. Linke Seite, Ball kommt in die Mitte rein, die Möglichkeit für Götze, Tor! Linke Seite, Ball kommt in die Mitte rein, die Möglichkeit für Götze, Tor! Linke Seite, Ball kommt in die Mitte rein, die Möglichkeit für Götze, Tor! Linke Seite, Ball kommt in die Mitte rein, die Möglichkeit für Götze, Tor! Linke Seite, Ball kommt... Um, I'm sorry. Um, this used to be our most popular pop group in Germany. It's called Modern Talking. I think they're both dead now, I'm not sure. Um, so that's about everything in two minutes, what you have to know about my country. 
if you have any more questions, just come up to me later. Um, okay, but then I realized that there are 35 minutes left, so I have to, I need somehow another topic I can talk about. Um, and I thought maybe I'd just show you, show you my favorite creative work, but then I thought, okay, there are so many talented creatives in here, it would be just too boring for you because I don't have to show you good creative work, you see it every day. Um, or, or maybe I could tell you some to reveal my creative secrets. That's what you normally do in these speeches. But I don't know, I don't really have any. Um, so I thought, okay, I would talk about two um, states of mind that I'm facing all the time, and every creative is facing it. I don't know if anybody would, would admit it, but um, we are all struggling with it. Not even the creatives, but I think everybody in this room. And these two emotions are fear and boredom. Um, so the next 35 minutes, I'm going to tell you my personal experience with fear and boredom. So see, it's going to be quite depressing, 35 minutes. But I'm German, we are not here to have fun. So, uh, but in the end, it's, it's a speech about hope, because um, I'm going to tell you from my experience how I managed to turn fear and boredom into something positive and useful, how, how I deal with it and, and get my power out of it. Um, let's start with boredom. Um, I'm not talking about being bored for, for an afternoon or being bored, for, being bored by a brief that you have to work on for a week, but it's... it's this kind of boredom that, that paralyzes you. When you wake up in the morning and you're so bored, you think, I just, I don't want to go to the office again. I'm just, I'm bored as shit. I just don't want to go there. So this real, talking about real boredom. Um, being a creative is actually, I think it's the most exciting job in the world, probably one of the most exciting ones. Um, and I remember when I was a junior copywriter, my one of, the, one of my, my highlights was when I saw my, my first commercial that was running in cinemas. And I was sitting in the cinema, I was so proud, and watching this film on the silver screen, it was just unbelievable for me. That I, this is something I, I would have never dreamt of, that, that people are sitting with me in the cinema watching my film. And I'm gonna show it to you, it's a, it's a bit older, so the resolution is quite shitty, but you will get the idea. Fourteen seconds. Nice. How long is the commercial? It's thirty seconds. Uh, what do we do now? I did it faster. It probably saved the saved some money or something. I don't know. What? Fourteen seconds. But through all the between all the commercials. Oh. But that was amazing, man. That was 14 seconds. It was kind of amazing. Yeah, it's like a record, man. 14. It's pretty good. Well, yeah. If they don't like That's it, right. hey, hire someone slower. That's right, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, that's enough. It's 20 more. <laughs> Um, so I remember this feeling sitting there, and you know the, these American films where the dad is sitting in school and there's a school theater on stage, and he's standing up and pointing at the guy, at his son who's playing a Christmas tree or something, and he said, this is my son! <laughs> That's how I felt with this commercial, but nobody knows this me. Um, so this was my first commercial in cinema, and one of these experiences that really got me. And then I got my second commercial in cinemas. And I still went there and said, hey, it looks good on the screen. And then the third one came. I didn't even go there anymore. Um, and I lost this, this fascination, this excitement about the work I've done. Um, and I realized that, that boredom approached me very slowly, just step by step and over years. But more and more things were fading away. All the things I got excited about in the beginning were just vanishing. And then some new things popped up, but they also... Uh, went away, and I just felt this, um, 
when you lose your excitement, you lose your passion. Uh, and um, I, I think everybody of you knows this feeling that it's, uh, you get bored by something, but something else pops up and then you feel happy again. It's always this, like this roller coaster ride. Um, this was the, like the first stage of boredom that I felt. It's like you get a bit indifferent to the things you do. Um, then there was um, another thing that happened to me um, that I won a Grand Prix in Cannes. It happened to me, it's funny. No? It happened to me that I won a Grand Prix um, it, uh, with this work here. wird aus Marketingzwecken quasi unsichtbar. Thank you. And this was a picture taken right after the ceremony with two of my colleagues. There are a lot of other people missing in it. Um, and one person's missing, it's me. Because I went to the ceremony, I went on stage, uh, and arrived after the, we got the Grand Prix, I went home. I mean, normally you think if you, if you win a Grand Prix in Cannes, you should, years later, you should still be hungover from that party night. Um, but this, night in Cannes, or this experience was, was like a turning point for me because I realized it just, it didn't touch me. And that's got nothing to do with arrogance. I'm, I'm far from being an arrogant person. It was just, I, I just couldn't handle this, this business anymore. I was so, so bored out by this award stuff, by my agency, by the stuff I'm doing, um, that in the, on the peak of my career, like being ECD, in the best, one of the best agencies in the world, winning a Grand Prix in Cannes, I went home and just went straight to bed. And the guys woke me up at seven in the morning, I remember. <laughs> um, but that was like a, what should have been the, one of the best experiences in my life, um, was one of the, of the weirdest one. But in the end, it was a, it was a great experience um, because I realized that I, I had to change something. Um, and I, I thought about it for a while. It was quite tough for me because I was, um, as I said, it was Jungfermatt was in this year, they were independent agency of the year in Cannes, uh, always one of the best agencies. I had fantastic clients. I had the best partners I worked with, like Götz Ulmer, Tim Wagner, guys, I, I really loved. I loved to see them, loved to work with them. Um, everything seemed to be just fantastic and perfect, but it wasn't. Because I, over the years, I just, I just lost my excitement, just bottom took over. And I, um, I knew I had to change something. Um, and that was a great thing about bottom, because bottom tells you when you have to do something and change something. 
and it gets you out of your comfort zone. Um, and then you had to quit. When I, I talked to, to some people about it, and many of them said, you're so crazy. You got the most prestigious, most glamorous job you can have as a creative in German ad business. Um, and others said, no, I understand you have to do it. My wife said, said yeah, it's the right time. Just, just go away from there because she, she knew how, how sad I became over the years. It was not that, that burnout thing that you get depressed. It was just I, I didn't feel it anymore. Um, and so I decided to quit and I realized because what happens in the month after that, I realized that boredom was the best thing that could happen to me because I experienced things I would never have experienced without it. Um, so boredom has, an, has a huge power to change things or to, to get things started. This is, um, was a fashion store on King's Road in London. It was run by Vivian Westwood and Malcolm McLaren. And there were a couple of guys hanging around every day because they were so fucking bored they just didn't know what to do. They went there every day hanging around drinking. Um, and in the end, um, out of boredom, the Sex Pistols were formed. So boredom created a music revolution. This is the power of boredom. Um, in my case, after I quit, I thought, okay, I need some, I have to get this, this feeling back and I want to, um, I have to see what, what is, what is, what is, what's making me happy again, what's interesting for me and what touches me. Um, so as Tim just said, I, um, I traveled as an intern through different companies. I started, I, I will never forget, I went to some, some amazing places like, um, took a look at Google and Facebook and spent some time at RGA. Um, but my first, after I quit two weeks later, I started at a small social media agency as an intern. I just called, I, I knew the guy who was running it. I said, hey, uh, it's me, can I do an internship for, for a month? And he said, well, you are easy, dear Jungfer Martin. I said, no, I'm not anymore, I quit. I would like to do an internship. And he said, uh, okay. Um, so I went there, and I will never forget my first day because it was nine o'clock on the Monday, nine o'clock in the morning, I was sitting there, but I was the only one. And then the first guy appeared at 10 o'clock and I was standing up and was about to say, are you crazy, motherfucker? It's 10 o'clock. Nine, nine o'clock we start here. <laughs> then I realized, oh shit, no, I'm not that easy. Dear. I'm the intern. I said, hi, I'm Fabian. I'm the new intern here. Hi. <laughs> yeah, it was a great time. It's, you could, I, I was reading articles I've wanted to read since years. I've, um, I've met so many people I would have never met because you're so in, this, in your small agency cosmos and you, you just don't see what's going on out there. So um, I met these two guys, for example, Till and Christoph, um, and they asked me, uh, they were about to found a startup in, in Berlin, which is called Idagio. And they asked me um, if I would like to, to join them, just to help them to build it up and, and do things. Uh, and they were so excited for me because I've never done this before. And I didn't get any money for it. Um, it, was just, it was just for fun. And I felt that fun and excitement again. And they were so, so fantastic for me to, to be free and do what I really liked. Um, so meanwhile, this is the biggest streaming platform for classical music in the world. It's really within three years of, within, no, it's six years now. But in the last three years, it was really rising. And it was such a fantastic experience. Um, I will get you some free vouchers afterwards. Um, then after this time, I, I did this for one and a half year. It was really hard to, uh, to get back into, into the real business, but I was running out of money. I became really smart and really poor, so I, I knew I had to do something to get the balance back. Um, and then I went to, to Colorado because, uh, as I said, it's a very special agency, and I knew boredom will reach me slower there because they're doing so many different things. Um, and we even did a, last year, we even did a fantastic campaign for Lufthansa that is um, working with this insight that people get bored by what they do and find something new that makes them excited again. Life can be crazy. Here in the North Sea, in front of the Lofoten Islands, it all began. It was a lot stormier those days, and cold. Damn cold. Winter in Lofoten is an attack. 
in the best kind of way. I was a surf photographer, standing on the most beautiful beaches on the planet. And it sounds stupid, but it actually became boring. Wi-Fi everywhere, high-rise hotels, and crowded beaches. I knew there was something missing. I started looking in more remote places to find the adventure that I was seeking. So I went to the Lofoten Islands, the islands of the gods. It was like I found this whole new world that maybe others had simply overlooked. It was minus 23 degrees, icy wind, and three meter high waves, a freezing cold feeling. Everything, it feels like it's about to shut down. I could literally feel the blood leaving my hands, feet, and face. exactly what I've been seeking out. These pictures, they meant so much more to me because I had given a piece of myself to get them. It makes me feel alive in a way I never felt before. I came here to do something different, and now I know I never want to do anything else again. So it was easier to do this campaign because I knew what's going on in their heads. Um, this, th th what I learned from boredom is when, when boredom knocks at your door and says, hey, I'm boredom, can I come in? Um, then it just wants to help you. And boredom will tell you, I'm going to stay as long in your head um, until you realize that you have to think about your situation and, say, and change something. Because it's, it's way easier to to live with boredom for a couple of years, um, but there will be that one day when you realize that this is just, I'm just not happy and I won't become happy anymore with what, what I'm doing. So boredom is a, is a fantastic driver uh, to give you excitement back. Boredom is a perfect driver for change and for thinking about your situation. So if you're bored, don't get scared. Um, it's a good thing to be bored because it makes you think. Talking about being scared, fear is a, the second thing I always have to struggle with. Um, it's like fear is nothing. Uh, I know that everyone in this room, we all are scared by many things in our business, by our daily work. Uh, it starts with the, with the deadline. Can I reach the deadline? Or will I lose this client or whatever? But, but fear is always around. It's nothing you, you talk about when you're sitting in a pub and say, hey, I'm so scared, what about you? Um, but it's something we all have to, have to deal with. And for me, it's two, two kinds of fear that I always struggle with. The one is this fear of, of imperfection, which means it's, um, that I'm asking myself, am I, am I still good enough to do this? I mean, I'm getting older, the younger guys are coming up, uh, being fresher, smarter, um, um, and quite often, I'm not sure if I can handle this all. I mean, when I started advertising, it was the client brief was we want a TV commercial, we want a print ad, and we want a radio ad. That was so easy for 10 years. I said, okay, I can do it. After two years, I knew, okay, I know what they want. And then uh, suddenly, everything changed. It got so complicated and complex. Um, and of course, everybody says, these are the most exciting times for creatives we are in now because we have so many possibilities, which is true. But nobody says, but I'm scared as shit by all these things. Because it's so complicated. Can't, can't we go back to TV, print, and radio? Nobody would say that. I wouldn't, but I think it sometimes. Um, so this is one of my fears. And um, there are these, these special projects where I get really scared, where I think, I don't know, can I handle this? Can I really do this? 
um, you know these presentations when you, this for example, when, when PETA is one of the world's biggest, and of the world's biggest NGO for animal rights. I don't know if you have them here in Africa. Um, and they came up and said, uh, we want to do something with virtual reality, but something really innovative and fresh that nobody has seen before and everybody should talk about it. And you know these presentations or when, when you talk to a client and you step outside yourself and you, you listen to yourself and you think, what the hell am I talking? Things like, yes, we're the perfect partners for virtual reality. We've done this for years, and uh, if we know how to do it, it's going to be amazing. And you just sit there and look at yourself and think, fucking hell, we're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> this was that kind of situation. But I don't know, somehow <laughs> uh, they believed that we could do it. Um, and this is what came, came out of it. Jetzt habe ich Angst. Ja. Puh. Hallo. Das ist cool, mit dem Hasen zu sprechen. Hi. Was bedeutet denn für dich Freiheit? Freiheit ist ja wohl das höchste Gut. Schau dich um. Ja, das fühlt sich frei an. Ja. So fühlt sich Gefangenschaft an. Ausgeliefert. Nein, das ist schlimm. Stell dir vor, das ist dein Leben. Sag nicht in einem Labor. Doch. Hast du schon mal jemanden verloren? Ja, mein Hund. Ich habe auch schon Freunde verloren. Ich würde dir gern zeigen, wo. Okay. Ich habe sie hier verloren. Oh Gott. Oh Gott. Oh mein Gott, das ist gut. Isst du Tiere? Oh, das ist mir peinlich. Weißt du, Jala, ich bin überzeugt. Die meisten Menschen sind von Grund auf gut. Nur Sie vergessen das. Man muss irgendwann mal vielleicht äh, anfangen. Ne? Ja. Und wann fängst du an? Heute. Die Tierschutzorganisation Peter hat eine immersive Virtual Reality Show entwickelt. Das kann ja keiner privat zu Hause im Umfeld mit VR erleben. Deswegen extrem stark. Ich liebe wirklich Danke für deine Zeit. Uns alle verbindet so viel mehr und wir alle haben nur dieses eine kurze Leben. And this, before we started with this project, fear really got me. Because I had again this feeling, how should I handle this? And then There's one thing that, that fear really helps you with, because it makes you, it forces you to trust in other people. And fear makes you realize, hey, you don't have to handle this alone. There are a lot of people around you. You don't, it's not, it's not only you. It's a group of people. And it forces you to work with them, to get them all in, and to trust them. Um, and that's what happened here. And Brian Eno, that was funny when I met this presentation, I, I realized that I'm getting old. Because Bri 25 years ago, I would have said, Brian Eno, turn that fucking music down. And now I think Brian Eno, what an inspiring person. Uh, well, anyway. Um, Brian Eno was, was uh, asked by a journalist if he would consider himself a musical genius. And he said, I'm not a genius. He came up with the word seniors, which means, um, All genies only can only exist within, um, within an environment that is creative and very fertile. So uh, I like this word a lot because it, I think it's, um, um, that's how we all should work, especially in these times, that you don't have this single genius guy, but you have this senior guy who's working with a lot of other people to create something great. Um, the other fear... I always have this losing control. Like, I'm a guy who likes to, I would love to do it, to do it all by myself. Um, um, and I hate this feeling um, when I think, I don't know if it's going to work, isn't it too risky? Um, so, so the, the slight feeling of things are slipping out of my hand. Um, but what you, 
what you see that, or what, what I realized is um, that it's actually a good feeling. Whenever you have a new, come up with an idea or, or are doing a project that scares you, it's a good thing. To me, fear became like a kind of quality check because fear tells, whenever I'm scared, I realize, okay, I'm scared because I've never done that before. It's something new and fresh, and I'm only scared because uh, I don't know how it's going to work in the end. But the, the thing is, if, you, um, if I have no fear at all, then it's just a sign of, okay, I've done that a million times. But I mean, what's the, the, most, the biggest killer argument in, in juries is it's been done before. So it's now fresh and innovative. And fear shows me when I'm scared, okay, this is something fresh and new, so it must be good. It's not the best feeling in the world to be scared, but on the other hand, it's a good quality check for me. Um, it was the same with this project. That has been done uh, before I joined Colorado, but I can imagine how, how many people were really scared if this is gonna happen because we had to invent a whole new technology. It was for, for Miserio, which is a non-profit organization. Um, uh, they're doing things like building schools in Africa or fighting poverty. Um, and we used to do all these typical billboards. Let's uh, donate two dollars and we can do a lot of things with it. Or using shocking pictures of, of poor kids, all that stuff has been done for a year. And then uh, we came up with, it, with an idea that was totally new. Um, and I'm sure it scared half of my agency because nobody knew if it's going to happen. In the fight against poverty and injustice, every euro counts, and it's clear that even small donations can make a big difference. With this in mind, the relief organization Miserio developed the Social Swipe, the first poster that accepts credit cards. The poster makes giving easier than ever before, and you can see the results. Your donation can provide daily bread for a family in Peru, or help an imprisoned Filipino child return to a normal life, all for just two euros. It's a small gesture that makes a big difference. The social swipe from Miserio. It's a fantastic, fantastic idea. And this, um, uh, we had to create this whole new, this technology just didn't exist. This instant donating with a credit card, it just wasn't there. And we, we had to work for months on it. Um, um, and after that, a lot of people came up like, like big hotel companies and they wanted to buy this technology from us. Um, but the thing is, once you, once you have such an idea and fear comes in, then you know, if you fight and say, okay, I'm gonna do it anyway, I'm gonna leave my comfort zone, I'm gonna take the risk, I don't know if it's gonna work, but if I don't try, uh, I will never see it ever and I won't rise. Um, if you do it once, then it helps you a lot because, because you're on another level again. All the things below these projects, you, you will never be scared of them again. So there are just two options if you, if you have fear. Either you forget everything and run, or you face everything and rise, which is quite true. I think that was my experience. Um, so fear can turn you can turn your fear into confidence by, by fighting. And the one thing, as I said, is fear makes you trust in people and get you back to collaboration and, and realizing, forcing you to realize you're not alone, you have to work with other guys and it's just fun to work with them and everything will be fine. The other thing is uh, fear makes you leaving your comfort zone if you use it as a kind of quality check. Whenever you're not scared by an idea, it's something that is not unusual enough, probably. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds quite easy. I'm not a psychologist or psychotherapist. Um, it's quite easy to, to say, okay, if you're bored, uh, it's going to be, everything's going to be great. If you have, feel fear, uh, don't worry. It's, it's so fantastic to have fear. Um, it took a really long time for me to, to realize it. Um, and I'm, I'm still scared and bored. Uh, and hate this feeling. But there's one thing, whenever I, for example, wake up at night sweating and think, shit, how I should handle this all, or when you wake up in the morning, the first thing is thinking about your work, what you have to do the whole day, and uh, 
can I manage it, how should I do it, all these things that, that drive you crazy, then there's one thing I always tell myself, like, like a mantra for me, um, we have an amazing job, it's so much fun most of the time um, to work in this business, um, but we don't build schools, we don't save lives, all we do is selling stuff. So never forget, it's only advertising we're doing. Don't freak out about it, right? <laughs> okay, and there's one last thing I want, would like to tell you. Um, after the judging session, uh, many people came up to me and said, what did you think about the quality of the African work? Is it good enough? Do you think it's not too low? Is it okay? Um, and what, what you should keep in mind, you can be so proud of the work you do because it's amazing what you're doing on this continent. Thank you very much.